Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast with Jesse Heater and MJ. In this week's episode, we'll be discussing Netflix's 22nd film, the 2017 thriller Clinical, directed by Alistair Legrand, starring Vanessa Shaw, Kevin Rahm, India Isley, Aaron Stanford, Nesta Serrano, Sydney Tamia Poitier, and Willem Calderon. Hello. Hello, mate. G'day, mate. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Good to be here. Yes, looking forward to our next film, The Thriller. It's been uh, a while since yeah. Mercy, maybe. I, I call Mercy a thriller. Mercy was, I yes. think you would have to call it a thriller. Mercy was a thriller. Yeah. Good, so another another Netflix thriller. As usual, we're going to go around and do our fast flicks. MJ's going to hit us off today with his 30-second well, quick summary of the film. Quick summary. Quick summary. Uh, an intense and confronting thriller, so it is a thriller, an intense and confronting thriller, thriller that follows the narrative of a psychiatrist trying to recover from a traumatic experience with a patient. It keeps you guessing about what's real, what's going to happen next, and why on earth you'd get into this field of work. Uh, I didn't want to be a psychiatrist after watching this film. <laughs> Too much pressure. Yeah. yeah. Right, I'll go next. So um, I've gone, a psychiatrist struggles with the failures of a past patient. She thinks putting herself back into her work will help. Will her work allow progress or lead to a further decline? Oh, the question. <laughs> Always have a question in there. Just for you. Just for you. All right, you go. <laughs> All right. A psychiatrist takes on a new post-trauma patient. However, it causes her past horrors to resurface from when an old patient violently attacked her. Good. Straight to the yeah, point, Peter. Very straight to the point. There's Always am. No denying very, what happened in the film after listening to you. Very direct. I, I guess with this one as well, we're going to spoil as usual. Yeah. Please, if you haven't seen the film and you want to see the film, go see it before you listen to us. So, what do we what do we learn about this film? What are, what are some? I didn't find much. To I say not much. Not much at all. It, it, it looked like it didn't uh, premiere at a festival, like a lot of our other recent films. It was yeah. just straight onto Netflix. Yep. Um, I saw that. So, Vanessa Shaw, who played Jane, um, and Miles, um, they'd previously starred together in The Hills Have Eyes as a couple. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was about all I could find. And Vanessa sort of Shaw had had played a psychiatrist before on yeah. House. For like one or two episodes. So we're really I clutching think. at straws. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I just couldn't find anything else on the internet about this film. It yeah, it was pretty pretty low key. It's mm. always hard as well when the film's got such a common word as a title. That <laughs> yeah. Type in clinical, you're not going to find anything bad about the film. And it's like, who would you like to see? The local. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you'll be, getting, you'll be getting ads from Google for a while. <laughs> um, critical consensus. So Rotten Tomatoes, there's only one critic review on this. Um, which probably what, further supports the fact that I can't find anything. Yeah, no one's seen it. Yeah. Um, so 210 user ratings, and it had 24% on that on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. 24, yeah. 5.1 on IMDb. Yeah, and they just had just under mm. 5,000 on IMDb. So that's probably the most we're going to find on it for anything else. Yeah. yeah. 2.2 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Uh, had about 1,500 ratings mm. there. So mm. um, the director, Alistair Legrand, he's, this is his second feature film behind the 2015 horror sci-fi the diabolical which which i'm not familiar with me neither no me neither but i saw his next film he's working on is called mile 81 um and it's based on um a screenplay by stephen king so a oh. screenplay by stephen king so I, not, it, not didn't, it didn't say a novel it said a screenplay right. based on a screenplay by stephen king so i'm not sure stephen i like king, stephen king but i'm not i haven't heard of mile 81 he could write something on a napkin Swimish, and they'd yeah. make it into a movie like he's <laughs> He's got a flavor going. of the month at the moment, yeah. definitely. Um, and, and Jesse will watch it straight away. I will. He's a great writer. Don't get <laughs> well, right. coming up, we've got a couple of Stephen King Netflix originals. So yeah, there is there coming up soon, which will be good. So debut thirteenth of Jan, Netflix worldwide. Twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Um, Microsoft Phone. That was the only product placement that I could see. The Microsoft Phone logo on the back of the phone multiple times. That was it. Yeah, okay. Good, they're getting better then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice little. Um, yeah, it's not. No one wanted to get behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, goodness gracious me so um, what else like so any other actors like I thought um, Naomi Watts or Tony Collette would have been alright as Jane yeah so they're the sort of characters they like to play yeah I actually think yeah, that there's a little bit of this and I, I think Vanessa Shaw was fine I think this film could have stepped out a little bit if there was an A-lister in that role because mm-hmm. I thought that, that Kevin Rahm who was I guess the main supporting um, who played Alex uh, the patient I thought he was excellent and I feel like if you get a great performance from him and an A-lister really anchoring this film, it becomes pretty legitimate. Yeah. And uh, it's one thing that I, I do. Like, a Naomi Watts would be, would be really good she for She would have been good, yeah. I, I didn't mind Vanessa Shaw. I, thought, I agree. I she was pretty good. She was fine. Not, not outstanding, but, you know, pretty good. Any other sort of things you can... Any other cast members you could replace? 
they were all I th- like they were nothing. They were all okay. What they no, I don't think anyone was bad. They were just nah. they were all okay. This, I thought this film was was pretty good. Like they did a lot of things right. Um, and I think in, in, in a film where there really is probably only two real main characters and yeah. the rest are all very supporting. Very, mm-hmm. very. Um, you don't really need too much more. No. Um, yeah, like character wise, I felt that um, maybe Miles, the boyfriend. And her friend, I forget yeah. her friend's name. Um, but they were, they didn't really do much, really. You uh, never thought they were going to actually play much of a role. Actually, it turns out that Miles kind of did play a role. Play a role. Yeah. But um, even with the so friend. So did the friend at the end. It was like, the friend. It was, was almost just chucked in there, though, wasn't yeah. it? Like, mm. I, I thought initially that relationship with the friend when they were going jogging together and she was sort of seeing flashes of Nora. I was like, okay, this friend's going to play. I, it, got, it reminded me of... Um, What's that film with Joel? The Gift? Have you yeah, seen yeah, The Gift? Yeah, The Gift, yep. That, that sort of scene when they were going for the run and getting sort of stalked, but it really had a real yeah. sort of the gift feel to it. Just like the opening scene had a real sixth sense feel to it <laughs> where you're in a psychiatrist and you've got an ex-patient, um, ex-patient rolls in and kind of threatens I was, to kill that, you. The first five minutes of that film, I was not expecting that from the start of that film, to be honest. That is awesome. The, the first Me minutes, neither. I, the first five minutes, I'm like, oh, wow, <laughs> we're, that's how we're starting. I, I, I messaged MJ, I'm just like, I, I watched the first five minutes. Holy shit. <laughs> out of nowhere. Wow. They set her up as like, okay, it's Christmas. She's yeah. working. She's kind of doing the admin side of the job as well as this job. But then, bang, like straight that, in. That was intense. Yeah. But I guess the what made it more intense was prior to that, you had the, there's just that shot of the moon. Literally, it was all, I timed it. It was like two minutes of the moon with the credits rolling over and then the splash of the puddle and then it was like straight into that. So I think that that slow credit start made that more impactful as well. Yeah, like right. that, that was, yeah, I like that. Mm. That was good. I thought um, from a character perspective, I thought it, it bothered me how over Jane or Vanessa Shaw's character, Jane, was about not administering drugs to her patients when yeah. clearly she sort of had that that drug issue because yeah. it was like, okay, you're very familiar with the impact that drugs can have on people and yet you're doing it to the side. And actually, it really bothered me when near the end you felt like she sort of had done her own sort of drug overdose and, yeah. and, and flipped out. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's even more stupid that she's <laughs> done it. But obviously, you find out that she was drugged, yeah. um, which I kind of enjoyed that little reveal. Um, but I just thought that the whole drug thing was way too over. And from the very start, they're like, oh, I'm not going to give you drugs. Or yeah. so people like, hey, can I just have, no, no, I'm not going to give you pills. I'm like, okay, this is going to come back. Yeah. yeah. Any, anything else for characters? Any other characters that you really liked? Well, I want to, I, yeah. as I said, I thought Alex, I thought Kevin Rahm as Alex was excellent. Yep. Uh, and I thought it was a really, a really well thought out character in the sense that I, I always sort of felt like, I think we were supposed to think that he had this little sneaky agenda. Yeah, with, with was always like, going to something was going even to the, the happen. Fact, the fact where he was like on the phone, it's like, you know, you're the best. I need you. Yeah. Um, and then the fact that he sort of kept coming to our house and there was obviously this big link. And the whole time I'm like, what's the link between Alex and Nora? I can't figure out the link between Alex yeah. and Nora, but there has to be one. Yeah. And then I actually started to think that Alex was going to be like a MacGuffin. And I was like, okay. They've brought this character in to be like, hey, draw your attention. Here he is. And mm. Nora's on the side and all this stuff's happening. And I actually got a feeling that the film was going to end and you're going to be like, they got me. Like Alex wasn't, ag- wasn't yeah. actually trying to do anything. It was just me thinking, yeah. here's this weird guy with a with a uh, stuffed up face. and It's a lot of time and effort in the film to him. Well, that's what, that was, yeah. Yeah. But I was <laughs> almost like, this is, this is kind of brave. Like yeah. I don't mind it. But then when the, when the link came through to him being Nora's father and it fit in pretty well. I was I preferred that ending <laughs> to be honest, but I, I really enjoyed that character. I think the very first scene you see him close the blinds and you can't actually see his face all that well, and mm. straight away you're like, I, I need to know more about this yeah. guy. You're trying to figure out more. You're trying to see him. Talking about that scene, I like that was in one of my sort of standout scenes because the you know when they first sit down, the camera's like it's like real low on her, and um, it's really you know it's a close up of her face, and then when it cuts to him. You get the whole couch, you get him. It's like a real long shot. So it's like trying to show you the, the differences between these characters. And then like the camera slowly moves in on his face. Like it's like Jane slowly trying to check out, okay, what's actually wrong with his face? And I just thought that was... Because that's as an yeah. audience member, yeah. that's what I was doing. Yeah. yeah talking kind of about looking it and going, going yeah. and what's, so I thought, I yeah, thought that what's was going on there. That scene, yeah, you mm. speak about was really good. Any other... Do you want to talk about some scenes that stood out? Yeah. 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 Hater, what have you got? What, what what did you like? The opening scene. The opening scene, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, what a, a great start. I, I, I didn't like this movie too much, mm. but 
I w- love the start of it. Yeah, that opening scene was fantastic. In the same sort of vibe, that's the first scene where Nora comes into the house was absolutely chilling. Like when the door opens and she so she goes outside and then you see Nora run inside. I was like frozen on my yeah. on my seat because at that point I wasn't a hundred percent sure that Nora was still alive. Yeah, I know they mentioned early on saying, "Oh, you said you're going to go visit Nora," yeah. and I was like, "Is this just kind of psych talk for trying to get her out of something?" So I wasn't 100% sure she was alive. So I'm like, is this supernatural? Like, yeah. And it was so creepy. I thought, well, all, pretty much all the scenes where, where Nora's in the house, I was creeped out. That was and so it was, creepy. It, it, what you realize, you know, I was sit, just sitting on edge and oh, yeah, I thought they were all really good and yeah, really scary. Terrifying. I, what about when she goes for the run? Is it, I think it was Clara. Was it Clara, friend? Clara. Clara. Oh, I've got a channel. Yeah. Anyway, bet some of that. Because she rocked up there as well. Yeah, just... Just running alongside, yeah. Oh, creepy. Yeah. So this, I, this film was creepy. <laughs> it was chilling. Like I was, I haven't felt that way in a film mm. in a while. Um, I like. So as I was, as we were watching the film, I really liked the use of the camera. There were a lot of tilted angles, like throughout the film, the angles were always skewered. The very start yeah. when she's walking down the hallway, it's kind of up from like yeah. above. That's Clara. Yeah. yeah like you, yeah. you're kind of looking up at her. Like the whole mm. time, there, you know, there's there's a lot of yeah these these tilted upside down shots of the house being trippy. And, you know, it really gave this, okay, who's the actual sane one here? Because you couldn't work it out. And usually you, you try and use that technique to try and say, okay, mm. they're in a, a different state of mind or, or yeah. something like this. So that to me, but then I felt like they overused it. I was going to say, yeah. you know what? That was the one thing I yeah. didn't like about it. Towards halfway onwards, it sort of, it became off-putting yeah. rather than being a device that could be used well. Like I was like, the first half was like, oh, this is good. And then I was like, mm, using it a little bit too much. So I tried too hard to do it because I, I get that and yeah. then... It was actually too obvious. When you want to see that happening is when it's it's, a, it's on a subconscious level and you know without knowing that someone's, someone's yeah. in, in a dazed state or whatever. In this, I was so aware of it. I hate saying that. It's like, it reminds me of Peter, <laughs> Peter Griffin on yeah. Family Guy. Like, I don't want to tell you right now, but I'm aware that I'm watching a play right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I like, it was too much. Like I was, I'm like, I know what you're trying to do yeah. and it's not really working. There's always this argument about Die Hard being a Christmas film. If we, because, I was thinking this too. I'm like, are we going to call this a Christmas is film? Is this a Christmas film? Because Die Hard is. <laughs> well, Die Hard is a Christmas film. So I will uh, argue all day it is a Christmas yeah. film. I didn't mind the the underlying Christmas thing in this because I felt like that helped progress the film quite a lot. Um, it was so, good, like when he was like he was asking about like the decorations and mm. stuff, like why there were no decorations up, and that that was good. So like you know the carols were playing throughout, and mm. um, you know the first connection she had with Alex was that you know he liked a lack of Christmas spirit. So it sort of gave mm. them that connection to start because he noticed there was no decorations. And then, mm. you know, she's sitting or well, lying in bed and the Christmas carol with Ebenezer Scrooge is on the TV. And then, you know, she sits down with Miles and has that connection with him first because they, they get all the, the decorations out and there's like the one that's not broken. And she's like, what'd she say? Something like, um, you know, it reminds me of, um, of Nora, like that, you know, they're all broken and there's this one sort of standing sort of thing. Um, not to mention when it was broken, it was like the bloody glass that she glass was trying to mm. Yeah, the, which came back as well. And um, yeah, and then like she has that other connection with Miles because she's like, oh, I hate this time of year. And he's like, yeah, me too sort of thing. So I liked that that was running throughout. I thought that was cool. Yeah, I thought that too. But uh, why does she watch Scrooge like or Christmas Carol all the time? Because <laughs> that was obviously, you know, the same period. Maybe it was over a few weeks. And she just kept watching that, that same, same movie. I yeah. don't know if that's what they just bought the rights for. But probably. <laughs> I wasn't sure was if it, I missed something with that. Um, was her favorite movie? Yeah, she, just kept, she just kept on watching Maybe because she doesn't like Christmas. Yeah, so she just like yeah, Scrooge doesn't, doesn't like Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Likes watching Scrooge. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the clock was used well throughout as well. There was like always shots of these clocks like in the house, at the office, at the therapy session. So that was good just sort of showing, you know, there's this, this time's ticking by like, and nothing's happening. Like she's not progressing. So mm. I like that. Um, what do you think of the black and white scenes that were slowly revealed? Alex's scenes of his memory coming back. I liked, I liked that. Mm. I did think the same as the, the tilted angles. Like it got a, it got a little it was bit, a bit much. Yeah, it was a bit much. Because I felt like, you know, we've seen this now four or five times yeah, yeah. as it's coming back. But I did like that contrast where you finally see his face and it's just the red, the blood on his face is red while everything else is. Yeah. Like, it was like Sin City, wasn't it? Yeah. But I, it's, um, they were really interesting scenes because I actually wanted to find out more. And I like mm. the fact that they drip fed it to me. And, they, and that's yeah. cause you, you can get that wrong sometimes where you really piss off the audience saying, no, no, I'm not going to give it to you, but they give you enough. And you know, the end result is that he's missing his face basically. Yeah. So you're wondering how it's going to get to that. 
And I like they use the montage a couple of times as well when she's sitting with her clients, and I like that too yeah. to sort of show the yeah. you know I was highlighting how boring her boys is, yeah. and that's why she needs to go back to yeah. Alex. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing. Do you believe like she she keeps saying that? No, this is what I'm really good at. And do you do you believe that? Yeah, she's really good at it. Or do you think it's just like I just need this because this is why I got into it? I, it's a, it's a tough question. It's one of those questions you don't you, you don't know the answer to because. Yeah. Uh, that maybe can be one of our questions as well. Is like, you know, was she yeah. good? <laughs> yeah. Did did this did was working with Alex trying to help herself or yeah? Was yeah she, was she yeah, just being selfish being because yeah. she it was yeah. the itch that she needed Maybe to scratch, scratch kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. Anything else that stood out? I liked at the end um, that they showed his face ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> I was, um, I think it was a kind of payoff that we needed. Like, yeah. I would have been annoyed if they didn't show me that. As, as sick as that sounds, um, when you when you go there and, and you see the back of his head, I'm like, show me his face, show me his face, because I knew it was ripped off, and <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm, that I'm he had glad the balls to do that. Like a, a cornier sort of movie would have, you know, then he would have stood up. Yeah, and yeah like, exactly. So at least yeah. they sort of ended on that. Yeah. I'll be honest, I was completely glued to the screen for that last ten minutes. Like I was yeah. so in, and I watched this movie at night time, which probably you guys probably did as well. Probably a lot of people do. And I couldn't like get my heart to stop racing by the end of it. Like I was so in and I was walking around the house and I was just trying to calm down before I went to bed. <laughs> Not that I was, I wasn't frightened, but it, it was so exhilarating. Like that ride at the end, um, that, and that's, that's exactly what you want to get out of a film. Yeah. I watched this pretty late at night. And was creeped out that some little girl was going, to running, was going to be running up and down the hallway. I was like, I'm just going to sit on the couch for a while. Like, I'm not moving. Let's turn the lights on. Let's just chuck uh, on an episode of The Simpsons. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, it, it was good that in that it was creepy. Like, I mean, I I like watching like scary movies because I like the fact that I do get scared during them. Yeah. So I, I liked being scared the in this movie. You want, yeah. Isn't it? yeah. What what didn't really do it for us? Um, I just. I really like that that first um, scene, but even but before that happens, she's calling her patients to check up on them at almost midnight. I don't understand why she's calling them at almost midnight. Yeah, not I a good that. time to be calling your patients. <laughs> That's a good point. I had that as well, but I felt like that was a part of that thing. Like to me, when she was on that phone, it was like she was, didn't really enjoy doing that though. It was like she was like, "Oh, yeah. oh can't wait to I get th- home." Yeah, I, I, I think it showed that, but it just it just seemed really weird to me that yeah, she's. She's, she's calling patients and, and then you see the clock and it's almost midnight. Was it, it almost just, midnight? Was yeah, it was, it was almost midnight, yeah. yeah. And it, it's just a weird... I mean, I understand like why you wanted to show that, but the timing just didn't add up for me, for her to be calling her patients that late. Well, I, so to me, when I saw that, and that's why I don't like that either, is because to me it was like, oh, it's Christmas time, there's all this Christmas stuff. She's annoyed that she's still at work because she wants to be home for Christmas, yeah. but then it just led into her So now she's disturbing. Yeah. I got the idea, though, that Christmas. she was... She, I got the idea straight away that, yes, it's Christmas and this girl's at work. I felt like she didn't care that she wasn't missing Christmas and I felt like she's this workaholic that yeah, worked yeah. through Christmas because she'd rather be doing that than celebrating it. Celebrate it, yeah. Um, I didn't like... There was the scene where um, Nora's in the house and then... Um, she goes into the room and there's all the blood and the photos on the bed. And then like, you know, the police come and um, Miles, her boyfriend's mm-hmm. there trying to, you know, settle her down. And um, she's like, oh, I'm not going to call the cops because she doesn't want Nora to go back to where she's drugged and forgotten. I'm like, realistically, that's pretty freaky that someone's <laughs> yeah, this done is, that this to your is bed. so full on. That's yeah. like so full on. And you're like, nah, I just yeah, walked out for this girl. Like to me, I was like, that's she, pretty ordinary. Yeah, she made some bad. I mean, even, I mean, it doesn't suit the narrative of the story, but she shouldn't have kept seeing Alex after he broke into her house. Yeah. The fact yeah. that she didn't refer him to someone else, is, it, it's, it seems crazy to me that, you know, you. If, I guess like she was so mentally unstable though. And It's true, and yes. Alex did. <laughs> He seemed he genuine. Made a, he made a compelling case. Yeah. Like, I kind of get it. He did seem genuine. Um, but I agree. But, like, but yeah, but in, in the real world, you'd be like, I'm sorry. This yeah. is just <laughs> this is This happen. is no way. <laughs> um, but at least they didn't just gloss over that. And y- y- there was reason to believe that she would continue to see him and mm-hmm. why. The bit I wish they glossed over was at the end when, um, you know, he's got a trapped or whatever and she's having a go at him about what he's done to his daughter and his comment was like oh you can't help who you fall in love with yeah he was basically just, I just love yeah. her so much yeah I was like that's something you can gloss over we work out that yeah. you know, we, we know that you don't, we need, that to, out. You yeah. don't need to feed that they to us they felt that a, a, yeah. a bit like, too much that's a bit too gross yeah um yeah um no no you go you go um just the scene when 
it, when you see Nora in the hospital um, with the other psychiatrist there and she's scratching at her wrist and, <laughs> which which wasn't really nice to watch yeah, well, but she just gets out of her restraint far too easily yeah. I feel like you're in like obviously in some kind of mental institution yeah. where I assume they would expect patients can be doing Do all that things those restraints should keep you like locked up it just didn't seem right that she can just slip out of them she ripped all her skin off to make it looser <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that was, yeah oh, it, I was uncomfortable watching that scene. it was uncomfortable but yeah it, 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 it yeah, to, to me, it just didn't seem right that she can get that she yeah. can slip those restraints. Like they should be, you know, really secure and tight, yeah. and, and and so you can just keep scratching away, um, and it's not going to make an effect on you escaping. I think the scene that bothered me the most was um, the first time that Jane hears noises outside, and she goes outside, and this goes to the camera work that, that kind of bothered me a little bit too. They went for the handheld camera work. Every time there's one of those scenes, you could tell that they had the handheld yeah. camera before it oh, even started. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, we're going to do a bit of this. Yeah. But um, they tried to really disorientate you so you can't really see what's going on, but they did it in they such did. a clunky way. Yeah. That it was like they were trying to hide the fact that there's actually a person here, but we don't want you to see him. And even that scene where you finally hear the last bang and then you see someone running away, you like see like a silhouette run away. Yeah. It looks so bad. Mm-hmm. And I think the whole time I actually thought there were two people there by the way that they were... Which but the, the way like the... Yeah, the bushes. Yeah. And, yeah. But then that last shot when there was someone running away, I was like, oh, this is terrible. Yeah. And mm-hmm. but you know what? To their credit, they got those scenes right after that because yeah. that was, they were the best scenes. Um, so I'm glad that they didn't continue with that, but that was really poorly shot and probably poorly done. Yeah. Um, the my last one is, and I mean, I I love violence in movies, and I, <laughs> I, I love my blood and guts. <laughs> so at the end, when Alex is stabbed in the neck, and there is so much blood <laughs> gushing out, which was over the top, but really cool. But when that much, that much blood is gushing out, you cannot just hold it and keep walking up those stairs. I, I just that, that was to me was not believable. The amount of blood that was gushing out that he can just continue on walking. He should have been on the ground and and done. And then <laughs> after he's managed to have his face ripped off, he still manages to walk all the way back. He does, yeah, the couch. yeah. yeah. <laughs> his last little bit of energy is like, you know what? I want to get comfortable. Yeah, oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I just couldn't do him just all that gushing out oh, I'll just put my hand there and I'll just keep on going like no 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 if that, that's all coming out you're done man I don't know if we gloss over this but do you think Kevin Rahm did a really good job in that role I yeah. thought he was excellent yeah I, 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 thought, I thought he was good yeah I, yeah. Thought, I thought he was really good really Actually, really believable and I, I don't I haven't seen him in much else but oh, he's my I, I, I've got a good story when we, oh yeah we, I mean I, guess we he, I, I think like my main one is um, he was he's the sergeant in the Lethal Weapon TV show and he's, he's okay in that and I think I've seen him a couple of things where I'm like oh, oh yeah, he's okay so, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've never really like nah, I don't know no, no, him. noticed him as awesome and I was like oh yeah well, that was that was pretty good well I, I guess we will get to the end I, I am DB'd him yep. because mm-hmm. when they showed the scenes of him with a normal face mm-hmm. I was like oh that is such a familiar face and I was looking and I was screaming rolling he's been in tons of stuff right but small mm. small parts, small parts and, yeah. exactly and i'm yeah. like no none of these things are what i'm thinking of so i put it to bed and then the next day i like no there's something like what what is it that i that i know him from and i saw he had a credit from friends yeah. one episode i was and i've glossed over it initially i'm like i think i can see him in friends so i googled like kevin round friends and i remembered it immediately he was like he was dating phoebe whilst he was working for monica at the restaurant and Phoebe wanted to break up with him, but then Monica wanted to, yes. wanted to fire him. Wanted to fire him. And they didn't yes. want to do it at the same time. And yeah. then they eventually did it. And then he was like really lovely. And then Phoebe wanted to get back together. With him. <laughs> and then I was like, that's who it is. Yeah. I, 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 I can see that now. He was my MDB as well. <laughs> but for a different, different, um, different things. Pretty niche, yeah, my that's pretty niche, my one. <laughs> well, um, so he was in Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is one of my favorite yeah, films. And that, yeah, he was um, worked with Nina in the TV network on Nightcrawl. And I was like, yep, I remember for then. I'm like, I know you from other stuff as well, but um, I used to love Desperate Housewives. That, that's what I thought I might yeah. have seen him from. He was in Desperate he was the He was the real estate agent and the gay couple on Wisteria Lane. So he was in Desperate Housewives for quite a while. Yeah, that's I what like, I saw. Yeah. And I'm barely seeing it, but I'm like, maybe that's what I yeah. remember him from. But it wasn't. It was well, Hader, did you look up anything? Mine was Jane Psychiatrist. Okay. What was he from? He's the news reporter from Die Hard. Oh, wow. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I look at it, like, I saw it because, you know, this is like, what, 30, 30 years, years on, so I'm looking at him going, The voice? I know you. The like, uh, no, just, it, it was his face. Oh, I, I'm not sure who you are. Look it up. He's the news reporter from Die Hard. He, he, he's the, I won't swear, he's the jerk from Die Hard, almost did, <laughs> that actually punches in the face at the end. Like, ah, oh, he's great. Two Die Hard references in this yeah, podcast. Yeah, wow. 
we should probably go back and have a what are some of the themes in this some of the, the the things that underline this film there's a couple of things a lot of stuff with around with and around mental health especially yeah. I think the one that I like the most which is probably pretty obvious but there's no right or wrong way to like treat the fragility of a human mind yeah yep so yeah like she, I mean, she, she kind of points out the two different kind of ways, you know, confrontation. Some yeah. psychiatrists do like the, like, like the medication that he wants and she, she prefers just to talk and yeah. things like that. Like which ways, you know, it yeah. works different for different people. Yeah. Like that whole idea of confronting the trauma mm. and, and dealing with the trauma. Um, but then there's also that other side as well, like where, you know, dealing with disconnection and insecurity and anxiety. And they kept saying this word disassociation as well, like disassociating with what's going on. Yeah. Um, there's a thing there too with, with Jane, like regretting her past. Like she had this whole fear of failing the whole time. And that was the reason she didn't want to let Alex down. She didn't want the same thing to happen with Nora. And that was, that was her whole thing was she doesn't want to let anyone down again. Um, I suppose that's based on a pretty traumatic uh, episode though. It is massively. And, and that leads into their idea of reality as well. Like I think Nora, Alex, um, and Jane, they all struggle with what's real and what's not all three of them. I actually think as a result, mm-hmm. I think the director did a really good job at me as an audience member thinking what's real and what's, what's, what's not. not yeah. mm-hmm. Even though most of the time it was exactly as it played out, except for when the reveal when she killed Miles. Yeah. That's when I'm like, what else isn't real? So, so when she killed Miles, you're in the kitchen. There's, there was like we'd seen her get the knife before and I think mm-hmm. that was purposely done because she kills him with a corkscrew. You see them how they film the corkscrew on the floor, yeah. and like zoom in. <laughs> I'm like, I reckon they might pick yeah. that. <laughs> I reckon she'll get to that. <laughs> so the corkscrew is like screwing someone over, like screw, oh, uh, yeah. like it's just this yeah, little yeah. symbol. Like, yeah. like she's, you've seen her take the knife before. Why not just, you know? And I guess we see her drinking that wine multiple times throughout the, the film as well. Did you, like, mm-hmm. did you notice when they film it as Nora in the house, and she just she got the table in front of the um, door, yeah. and she, she just pushed, pushed it through, through it with ease. I'm yeah. like. What the hell? How'd she do yeah. that so easily? And then when you show what Miles doing, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Like a yeah. you know, pretty strong policeman. Yeah. Just yeah. Like bang. And I'm like, oh, it wasn't actually, yeah, yeah. that was a nice little clue. Yeah. That was good. Did you see that coming? No, because in your mind, you're still thinking, oh, it's not real. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But no. did you, when, sorry, when the reveal of um, when they, when that you really found out they killed Miles, did you think that was going to happen? No. No. I, I was kind of expecting to go onto the film and you just see her just kind of thrashing about in the kitchen just by herself like she's made like oh, in her yeah, head yeah, yeah. I, I didn't expect for Miles to be there I thought she'd just be by herself just thrashing around yeah I thought it as soon as they said what would Miles think if he what would you say to Miles if he was here yeah, yeah. I was like oh that's a really weird Ooh, thing yeah, to say yeah, it's, it's a weird question but that was that was a really nice twist it was good yeah that was good that's a chair squeaky um, <laughs> <laughs> so what else can we take from this film so like, I, I, it looked nice for what it was like it didn't look it didn't look like you know, poorly made for the budget they probably. No, had. you're right. It didn't, considering some of the yeah. some of the budgets that they do have on Netflix, yeah. just didn't seem to have that restriction. They bought a lot of fake blood. I reckon it looks like <laughs> <laughs> a bit of the budget which, went towards that, which I like. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the whole reveal was was pretty slow um, and really methodical. Like it filled it filled all the holes. Right, you didn't walk out of this film going. What, how did that end? What did I miss? Like mm. they were really methodical in filling everything, which is okay. But I think it probably sta- it probably stops it from being a great film from a good film because it's just like this is this is the clever story we're telling, but we're going to tell it to you. So yeah, you don't it was miss pretty anything. straightforward yeah. in, in telling. There was no kind of ambiguity. They really to, like, what's going to yeah. happen? Like I, I um I think I was online like reading like you know some reviews and stuff and you know always somehow find my way to reddit and like <laughs> the, uh, i saw a few people being like oh you know what do you think of this interpretation of this <laughs> this and this and then a few and then a few comments is like no the movie just happened as it happened <laughs> yeah. stop thinking too much into it it happened as it happened i'm assuming you saw the same reddit thread as me where this person opens the thread saying Here's the three things that could have happened. Yeah. <laughs> the, and the one that actually happens, they're like, this is the least likely yeah. happening. Yeah. And these are the other two reasons. I'm like, that is absurd. Yeah. <laughs> you think I, that's I, that I, I just love that they got shut down by so many people going, no, no, no. no. This, you, movie, what what, yeah, this movie was exactly what you, <laughs> what you watched. There is no kind of debating and stuff. There wasn't any hidden messages as to like, oh, was it this? Was it this? No, <laughs> this movie was exactly how it played out. <laughs> um. So perfect, 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 for perfect for Netflix. Yeah, red. Perfect, perfect for Netflix. Netflix. But it would have been good in the cinema too. Yeah, good dark room. Yeah, night, yeah. dark dark room cinema. Yeah, it was it was scary enough at home. Yeah, <laughs> I made sure I turned the lights off at home. Occasionally, I, I I do like to watch movies in the dark, but occasionally I leave a light on because it doesn't really change much of the ambience. But 
this one I was like no, get that light Watch off out. I'm in I'm all in I think I watched this like probably started at like 11pm <laughs> <laughs> so I would have finished at like just before 1 I would have been in bed for an hour Ooh. and a half I, I, I don't think I thought this was maybe 15 minutes too long it, yeah, yeah it yeah. did a little bit yeah, it, it, it kind of dragged out a little bit probably no. I think it was like an hour 45 hour 50 yeah. An hour and a half, I think, would have been a and good... And that's what I mean about they really tried to fill all the holes yeah. in. They didn't want you to be asking any yeah. questions afterwards. Yeah, just kind of like about 15 minutes too long, probably, for me. i got a few questions for you guys. Mm. So, Jane was constantly on about caring for her patients first. That was her... She's like, I need to care for my patients first. Did she, or was it more she was doing what she was doing for herself? I think she thinks she was. She was. Yeah, I better say, I think, I think in her mind... She's caring for her patients. Yeah. 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 You know, like, heart yeah. was in the right place. Yeah. She wasn't in the right state of mind to be doing it, I guess. Not at all, no. Even though they kept saying it's two years since it's happened or whatever. Yeah. Still, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, anyone who's been yeah. through trauma knows that that doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, there was a scene where um, Alex is sitting with Jane and she does this, the four, seven, eight, where it was like, oh, yeah. breathe four through the nose, hold for seven seconds, and then exhale through the nose for eight. I did it straight away. Same. That's I think we all did. Can you? Can it was you ex- hard. It was so you, hard. <laughs> exhaling for eight. Oh, it was so I hard. Breathe the last bit, I was like, yeah. <laughs> extremely. Difficult. Yeah, it's really tough. But I guess it takes your mind off anything that's going yeah. on, because like, oh. you can't breathe. What's the, what's the what they say when you're going through like an anxiety attack or anything like that? Um, try and like think of things around you and notice things around you and touch things. So I guess you just sort of come into the now as opposed to everything that's going on in your head. Yeah. I guess something like that, if you're really focusing on how long you should be breathing for, you're not worrying about it. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Because you've got to concentrate on doing yeah. that. Yeah. That was an anxiety tough. Account account yeah, I was like, I'm hyperventilating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too long. <laughs> so Alex broke into the house at one stage and he was in the kitchen. At the start. At the start. Yeah. No, he was in the psych room. Because her her office her psych office was part of the house. Yep. And she so she went from the kitchen into, into that room into that room. Yeah. Okay. So no matter like was this an attempt by him that failed at the start? Was he trying to get to her first? Do we think, or do you think that? I think was he actually having a bit of a breakdown there? I think this was more his planning, and getting like the layout of the yes. house. Yes. Like was it him breaking out to help? Mm. Yeah. I don't think he yeah. was yeah. ever having any episodes ever. Yeah. No. The whole thing. Yeah. Was yeah. I, I I think he knew exactly what was going on. So I, I don't think this was a failed attempt on him to do anything. I think this was him just getting in the house to get like you know the, the layout out and know exactly where, where everything are. is to plan for the later. If she had a late charges there, take. it would have been done and dusted. Yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't have happened. Yeah. It would have been a great film. I, I guess maybe he... A bit, a bit, obviously, it seemed like he'd done his research, so maybe he kind of always thought that she won't because, you know, she cares too much about the patients. He'll, she'll believe my story. So kind of what about the time he calls her and then she goes to his place, though, like, and then he's, like, vomiting over the toilet because she's obviously given him that needle. Mm-hmm. Was that all made up as well? He's playing a long game, yeah, <laughs> maybe. That's a, that's a huge game. Why yeah. does he want her over there in the first place? Yeah. Like, he could have faked there that he was... Yeah. Like, that yeah. doesn't go with his whole plan, but... Because they obviously... He obviously... Part of the plan was to get Nora, you know, into the house with um, yeah. Jane a couple of times. Mm. Was that to... Oh, well, yeah. Was that to, to draw her out so Nora could get in and... Maybe. And to, because to was, at one point in the house, wasn't all, all the photos were there? That was a different time. time. Different time. That was a time when she kind of ran all the way through the house. Yeah, like, okay, yeah. And, Maybe was it yeah, a, a ploy just for Nora to do something? Maybe so. Like, why? Was it, why was he did, trying to get Nora to kill her? But Mike, like, why did Nora want to work with him after everything that he'd put her through? I don't know if she. Oh, yeah, well, she I was. Think she had a choice, maybe. Like, well, she ended up killing herself. Did she? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or did, nah, Alex, did he Alex, kill her? Yeah, I think Alex did that. <laughs> but I don't know why you would. Like he was obsessed. He was, like, yeah, he was obsessed with her with, without being in the right state of mind. Mm. He was obsessed with her. So if. Then, yeah, if she's at that far gone, why was she helping him? I don't think I'd... she was even... Because she clearly wasn't ready to be released from the psych ward. But she was doing what he was telling her to do in the house. But I don't know if she even knew what she was doing, maybe. I think you could sort of argue that she was just... just Cover that like, bed and those photos mother. and that blood. That's, well, I think he did that. I think he did, yeah. he did that, yeah. He did that, yeah. Because she was following her around. Yeah. She was following Nora. Still pretty quick to do that, though. Like, that yeah. would take some time <laughs> yeah. to set up. Yeah. Good man. Questions. Yeah, interesting. I don't Any, know why I glossed over that. Anything else? Um, I had a question that I have since. Oh yeah, you know um, when she breaks, when Jane breaks out of the psych ward at the end. <laughs> <laughs> this psych ward is pencil? not good. What? Good security. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't true. work out what it was that she stabbed him with. Was it a pencil, yeah, pen, something like that? Something like that. Yeah, but just yeah, something yeah, on his yeah, desk. Yeah, yeah. Letter open or something. Maybe. What car was that that she was getting into? 
that that she had keys to. And yeah, and, and the, 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 the killer was and, and in the, there. And, and the exact no, no, he wasn't in there. Didn't he follow her in and get in the door? Oh, did he follow? Well, he got, was it her friend's car? He got a friend. Uh, he, he was in the car when her friend got in. Yeah, yeah I knew when that. When she got in the car, I think he she followed her and, and got her through the door through the window. Oh, did he? Yes, he wasn't in that car. Okay, he was only in her friend's like, car. Well, how because is he that, that's waiting? an amazing coincidence yeah, that she happened to get in the wrong car. car that, yeah. yeah, but I don't know how she gets in that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Like, like you assume, did, I guess she did. Did we miss her stealing keys? keys yeah. from the bloke. Which means they showed the, 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 they they spelled out everything else <laughs> in the movie for us, but they didn't spell out her grabbing the keys for us. I know it would have been okay. Grab the keys and yeah, would have been fine. Press the button and see which car. I'm but yeah, I'm, I'm fine no, with that. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not works. exactly sure. I was how like, she hang on, it's not like it's not like she drove there and that's her car. There's yeah. the car that I parked when I was coming to the cycle yeah, the, voluntarily. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that one was thought out very well. Okay, I don't feel as bad. I thought he was just waiting in the car. Like if she if she runs out, she'll come into this. No, because because remember. Remember, um, I think he was saying, he was like, oh, I was oh, working waiting for you. how to break you out. Okay. And suddenly I see you running out. It was perfect. Yeah. 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 So he was just waiting in the bushes or something okay. for her. Okay. That, and right. it just timed out really well for I feel better for about it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, let's give our ratings for the film. We, if you do have sorry. a dog, though, oh, a dog. We haven't had a Bernie update yet. Nah, they, they like. To be honest, there hasn't been that many like, Bernie scared reasons. That nah, was Todd. Todd? Sorry, mm. Todd Bernie. Sorry, Todd. Bernie doesn't care. <laughs> Bernie. <will. laughs> I got two dogs. Bernie is fine. He'll watch anything. Todd. There was a few, obviously, a few scenes where um, you hear dogs in the background as you're doing all these kind of dark sort mm. of thriller movies and. So there was like five or six times where you just hear dogs barking and Todd's like <laughs> <laughs> looking around. He can't see anything. No. So. They were never sighted, those dogs, but um, my dog barked. <laughs> All right, let's do it. <clears throat> Rating out of five, we do this every week, and then we're going to give an average for our results. I think, MJ? Let's do it. Hit us off. Um, it did a great job at piquing my interest. I constantly wanted to learn more, and I felt like they did a good job at using the PTSD therapy and sketchy flashbacks to keep me wondering what was real and what wasn't. There were two or three genuinely chilling scenes uh, that got my heart racing and it was a very welcome inclusion to the film watching experience. Despite being a bit slow in patches, this was a pretty good thriller and I'd recommend it to anyone who's willing to stick with it. Three and a half stars. Oh, nice. Um, I, I, was, I kept worrying throughout the film. I was worried that the payoff wasn't going to be worth sitting there for an hour and 40 minutes. And I, I felt that numerous times as I was watching. And the payoff, it was sort of there. Like, it, uh, there, was a, there was a payoff. It was, it was better than I thought it was going to end. So, it was well made. Um, and it, although it did get repetitive times, you know, it does give you some things to think about. So, uh, I'm going to give it two and a half out of five. Heat up. I gave it a two. Um, I, it, it was creepy and it definitely scared me. You know, I, I liked the violence and gore and I was on the edge of my seat um, I was in the movie from the first five minute scene, but then my interest really did definitely wane and it got a bit slow for me. I, I did enjoy the ending of it, but overall, I just didn't really like it that much in the end. So I, I give it a two out of five. All right, so out of uh, five average, what does it give us as a team? I've just watched Hita completely butcher the calculator. He had all ready to go. <laughs> 2.67. <laughs> 2.67 out of five. Why did you press times or something? I, I, I wasn't sure if I added in my score, and then I think I added in twice because then I got a higher number yeah. and went, there is no way that was what it was. 2.67 out of five we, we got in the end. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, so on, on social media, we chuck a question up with that episode each week. This week, the question is, does Jane come out stronger after the events of this film? So does she Does she overcome? She's had one traumatic event. Does she come over, overcome this one as well? Or so is if you, she, if is you were writing clinical two, two, is it a whole down spiral event of yeah. her life from here on? Good right. question. Um, so we are on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Flix Forum, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, subscribe, five stars if you can. She's got to get over the fact that she killed her boyfriend. That's probably going to be the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah, that's the big that, one. That's a tough one. Yeah. That's a real tough one. Because um, when she realizes that she's survived, she's like, hang on, I killed my boyfriend and threw out all that. And no, 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 her best friend's dead. But did the boyfriend actually die? I'm pretty sure he did. Was she going to get yeah. arrested again? But did like, he, because killing the face well, man. No, but no, but she broke out. No, yeah, like surely, they, surely they're going to go and catch but her again. They, and bring at least her back. they found out that she got drugged. Yeah, that's but true. When she was tied up at the end, didn't Alex say to her like she's like you know he's died, 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 and she's like, well, the only person alive is Miles because he's the one that actually meant something to you. Didn't he say no, something like that? Because I think you watch the scene um, on the video of after she killed him, he's like lifeless, lifeless. next to her. And her best friend's dead and her psychiatrist, psychiatrist. who was also a friend. friend yeah. She got nothing. <laughs> so, no, I don't think she's going to do very well with people too. <laughs> well, there's one answer. So, <laughs> next week, um, 
We will be back again for another episode. We're looking at the 2017 black comedy film, Take the Ten. Uh, it's directed by Chester Tam, stars Josh Peck, Tony Rivoli, Emily Chang, Claire Patrick Coleman, Kevin Corrigan, and Andy Samberg. So, um, get on board. It sounds like a, if it's got Andy Samberg. Take the it? Ten. Take the Ten. Should be a good comedy. Um, as you, like, yeah. Thanks for good chat. Thank you, mate. That was no, good. Thanks, boys. Yeah, it's been fun. It's good one. Sort of in a similar ballpark with our, with our ratings on yeah. that one. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, join us next week and we'll see you guys then. See you then. See you, mate.